that we have examined a lot of uh, Bible definition of faith. We've given many numerous examples of what faith is. We've said some levels of faith from no faith to little faith, great faith, greater produce results, faith without works and the likes. So we are trying to look at the other side of faith that Hebrews made us to understand and which my brother said is the faith that a believer produce and everyone is going to write a, a report, a kind of testimony. I don't know whether they still do it now. There's what they call testimonia. I think we, do, we still have, do they do that now? You see, after primary school, we should go and collect testimonial reports. So I think that is to tell about the character. They just mentioned the academic reports as part of testimonial they used to give us in those days. It's to testify about the person's character when the person was in school. So this kind of faith that we are talking about is the one that the patriarch of faith that they have gone through what we are going through now. But they came out of it, and in Nevun, cloud of witnesses said they obtained good reports that they actually are fit. It's not the kind of faith that, oh, uh, the dead rise up. And even when the dead did not rise up, do you understand? Or they did not obtain deliverance from their problem, even as it that they have good reports. It is not to undermine the power of the Almighty God. Because I need to chip it in. We are in the season of Easter. Everything about Christianity is about power. The word of God is power. It's so painful that people will come with their problem, hoping that at church, when I come to church, we will receive our healing and the likes. And they go back the same way. I am talking to myself and I'm talking to every believer in the house that we should get to the level of asking God for his promises and he will do it. Praise the Lord up to the point that even government realized, medical doctors realized that ah, this one cannot be handled. We trust you, we give you a platform, come to our hospital, when you pray, people will receive healing. And it looks as if the more we pray, we are not obtaining any results. That is not to say that there is no power in the name of Jesus to heal. We have been given platform in the prison to go and preach so that people's lives will be changed. Is a lot of commitment, is a lot of demand on us. Because by the time we are talking about the other side of it, some people will now say, okay, uh, since it's my cross, I will now carry it. If God had not said it is your cross, don't carry your necessary cross. God still answers prayer. God still heals the sick. We can command the deaf to hear and they will hear. Because the sign will follow those that believe. So it is not just about uh, anybody, it's about a believer. We should go out into the world and preach, and as a result of our faith in God, they should be able to obtain their results. Praise the Lord. We thank God, the little one we, we are able to achieve in this house, people come here with their little problem, with their big problem, God still solve it, and all the glory returns to God. But we are not yet there, because without signs, without, without sign and works that is falling, some people will not believe. Praise the Lord. So that I want to lay that foundation so that when we get to the heroes of faith, we will now say, ah, okay, they have told us. And many of us, with our sense of uh, responsibility, when we trust God for something and it did not happen, we now shift the blame to the person we are praying for, that they don't have faith. No, we should not. Even if the person did not have faith, remember Lazarus was raised. He wasn't even alive. So our faith is enough to bring results. So how do we obtain this uh, result pro producing faith? It's about consecration. It's about being alone with God. It's about, ah, I'm responsible for these people God just give to me. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is healing. Healings. Because healings is in plural because somebody may be given gift that any form of chronic disease, if I lay my hand, the person receive, uh, receive results. There was a time that sickle cell people, their genotype began to change. So somebody may have the gift of healing, of changing of genotype, another person may be cancer. 
So don't let us mix it together. Each and every one of us is an assignment. And it's not an assignment that you submit. You yourself go before God. What is my take in this ministry that we belong to? It's not only about pastor that should lay hand. It's the responsibility of every believer to lay hand on the sick. And in our days and our time, as if the power of God is no longer effective, something must be wrong. All the fathers in faith, they turn situation around, they turn eye door, they do all sorts. But something is wrong with all that. We are not now producing results. The two men, the disciple that, 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 that healed the man at the beautiful gate, they say, silver and gold, have I known? What I give you, what are we giving people? Or those in my own version, I want silver and gold, and I still want anointing. Anyway, praise the Lord. But instead of what to trust God for healing, quickly, let's contribute money. Which are, this man needs this thing. We are not even depending on God to heal the sick anymore. I pray the Lord will teach us in Jesus' mighty name. So tonight, we have laid a foundation about a dimension of God that is six in the life of believer. And that is beyond, I ask God for a job with uh, Intel and I get it. Praise the Lord. I trust God that I'm going to have triplet in the nine, next nine months. Praise the Lord. Yes, God does all that. But there is a dimension of faith that we started last week that is beyond all these uh, material things. Although we, have, we serve a God that keeps saying there is no father that loves his children to suffer. Praise the Lord. But beyond that, there is a testimony that we obtain having passed through some stage in our life. I pray God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. I said most believers are at a loss to what God is doing to them. They need to know that eventually they will become a manifestation of God. You may not look like it. You may look as if, ah, this prayer God is not answering. You may be passing a, through a process. And after that process, you will still get results. And in passing through that process, if you do not compromise, you do not do anything that is funny, you will obtain a good report. Praise the Lord. Our work with God and our exploits in the kingdom of God, we always demand our partnership. We are in the week of passion. Paul Apostle said that I may know him and the power of his restoration, being made conformable with his death. You know, you want to have similar death of Jesus Christ. That's exactly what Paul was saying. So no, knowing his way and his acts is different. They are two different things. We believe God can do all things. We believe God has the power to do. But our attraction to this God is not about what he can do alone. It's about what he can make out of our life. Being a partner with him. Praise the Lord. Everything that happens... On earth is a union between Jesus Christ, the bride, and spirit. And at every point in our Christian life, there will always be a demand for partnership. At that time, it's no longer about you. It's no longer about your fame. It's no longer about your reputation. It's about you stand alone with God. The book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4 says, Hebrews 2 verse 4, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will, according to the will of God. That's the one side on one leg. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise the Lord. And also the just shall live by faith. So what is testimonial that we are talking about? A testimonial is a written declaration about someone's character that uh, this person has passed through our process. We know he will not, he will not do anything that is not of God. Is that what everyone is saying about us? We live in a, a time that there are some testimony that you have really helped God along the line. And God will like, I'm not part of this one though. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Not to undermine the power of God, I cannot do it. But there are some things that, you know, we are not to think about anybody because that's another <laughs> way that people miss it. When some people come out and the testimony look as if it's true to believe, 
it is between the person and God. I believe God can do all things. There is nothing impossible with God. But we should just allow only him to do it. But in a situation whereby we panic be something and me and say, God, God will just be like, oh, I know they this one. So when we are able to go through that process without compromising, we'll get a good report. And that good report is good testimony in other version, is a, a, a good result. I pray when we are being checked out, we will get a good report in Jesus' mighty name. I say it's a declaration satisfying to a person of character and conduct from which recommendation is made. I now make recommendation that this and this is the conduct of this person. And who can know us more than our God? Hebrews 12 one says, we are being surrounded by great cloud of witnesses. They are watching us. You may think nobody is there. And I tell you, that which you do when nobody is there, when no believer is there, is who you are. Not this outward appearance. You can tell somebody, I love you, I love you. In your heart, you are hating on the person. But is that not a God who sees the heart? So in whatever we do, we should know that what is more important to us in this faith thing is obtaining a good report. The assignment of faith is to print out your testimony. That's one assignment of faith. One assignment is that you, all, you ask, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, everything works perfectly. So the second assignment is that to print out your testimonial. Hebrews 11, 11. Having a, Hebrews 11, 11. Having a testimony before God, Having a testimony before God is, bet, is better than obtaining any desires. I tell you, no matter what, when God says this is wrong, it's far better. Because you may be calling yourself something, and everyone is not calling you. For example, somebody is so popular, is everybody is ailing the person. And everyone say we don't even know him. It's not in our register. Praise the Lord. And there's another man that they will oh, say, ah, this one, we don't even, you know, cannot even perform any. I even say this is one after my own heart. Which one is better? I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Hebrews 11:11 11, 11 says, "Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised." This is Mother Sarah in the book of Genesis. When people concluded that Sarah laughed, Sarah, Sarah doubted, Sarah did all things. The New Testament is giving us a report card of Sarah that he, he, he judged God faithful. How are we judging God? Even if this kind of word of prophecy comes to somebody, will you not say, eh? God, why did you delay this time? Why didn't you deliver me earlier? How are we judging God? Those are the things that they will use to, report, to write our report card. Praise the Lord. So he received strength. He now told himself after the laughter and the lie, say, ah, ah. God has said it. He's faithful now. For a 90-year-old woman to receive strength. Praise the Lord. Make herself available to her husband because she's not going to give her to uh, another Jesus Christ anyway. I made herself available to be able to make the promises of God to come to pass. Because she judged God faithful who had promised. The book of 2 Timothy 1 verse 12. 2 Timothy 1 12. The Bible tells us on one hand, there is a spiritual platform that converts spiritual possibilities. And it says, for the which cause I also suffer things, these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. That is testimony of Paul. He said he knew who he has believed. Do we know who we have believed? And I'm persuaded, are you persuaded, that he is able to keep that which I have committed into him against that day? That is the other side of faith that we are talking about. So when things seem as if it's not working, when it looks like you are being persecuted for your faith, when it looks that like you are being denied of your, of your benefit as a result of your faith, Paul the Apostle said, I am persuaded that God is able to keep that which is committed to him against that day. Praise the Lord. I say experiences with God produces his name. You know, we talk about experience the other time and the likes. 
Somebody call him Jehovah Jireh because he was about to sacrifice his own son. And God said, no, don't do that. I'm just, I'm just testing you. Jireh, God provided. But whether you call him Jireh or not, God provides. It is now your own personal experience. Praise the Lord. I pray we always provide for us in Jesus' mighty name. Example of Job. Job had all things. And he had faith in God, between him and God. He has all those things, but he has not obtained good reports. So he has to pass through that uh, trial. To a human being, they don't know. To Job himself, he did not know. So Mrs. Job, ah, that one even want to spoil matter. And I told us last week that the essence of some of this trial is to get to our faith and deny God. Because Mrs. Job told Job, cause God and die. What is the essence of life, of this, your life that you are living? And the man said, why would you be like one of those foolish women? It is only the fool that say there is no God. There is God, though, my brethren. It doesn't matter what we are going through. It doesn't matter our circumstances. There is God. God is somewhere watching each and every one of us. And weeping may enjoy for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Praise the Lord. With all that Job had, Satan thought is as a result of what Job had. That he wasn't denying God. And God said, I give you permission. But don't, don't touch it so. Nobody knows there was a script. Like the drama people, when they write a script, you don't even know the ending. Even Job himself did not know. But Job passed the test. I pray we'll pass that test in Jesus' mighty name. So that we'll be able to obtain a good testimony that is not because God is answering us in Salvation Center. It's not because we are more than that. We love him, we obey him, we know he is God, and that cannot change. Praise the Lord. When the Bible said as God, that uh, God so loved the world, it's not a statement to God obtained it. He earned it. Because he loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. He put his faith, he put his, uh, his word into an action to reconcile man back to God. So there are many times, many, many times that believers think that answers will come even when they have been given promises. But I cannot manifest until they've gone through change. Those promises are yea and amen. It's for us believers. But there are certain people, there are certain situations that we need us to go through some process. After we are past the process, there will be manifestation of the promises of God. Praise the Lord. One of the things that Satan is afraid of is when he sees a life of a believer. The value reports over results. They do get it. Believer that value good reports, obtaining good report, let me be on the other, on the good side of God, than the result I can produce. You know, as a result of fame, uh, popularity, do you understand that kind of a thing? If you have all the gifts without love, the Bible says what? And there is an aspect of gift of the Holy Spirit, there is an aspect of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Gift without fruit will not take anybody anywhere. I pray the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Any question? Any question before we go to number two person that obtained good reports in Hebrews 11? Do you have any question or any contribution before I proceed? Any question, any contribution? Praise the Lord. So we last week we examined verse four of Hebrews eleven. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witnesses that he was righteous. And we concluded that even through offering, somebody obtained good reports. I found it difficult to like a true believer that you have to preach and you know, use some, what they say, say um, motivation to make people to give towards the thing of the kingdom. How will kingdom be funded without money? I tell you the truth. Going to a location to start a church costs a lot of money, you know. Ministering to the needy is another dimension. 
providing for those that I need physically. I tell you, poverty will not bring glory to God. Though. But it's the mindset, what you want to use that word for, that God is looking at. If it's only about yourself, or about my, let me use myself as an example. How much does it cost to maintain a small girl like me? It's not much. Praise the Lord. But the kingdom of God must be funded. I was discussing with one of my sisters on Sunday that a big project that needed to be done. But it's so sad when maybe a leader is calling a meeting, ah, we should do this, maybe the pastor, and somebody say, ah, pastor, it's not by force, so let's check what is in the account. It's already killed the, the process. We shouldn't be a Christian like that. God brought out, it's not even, if we, we don't want to, to bring, but don't kill the process. Do you understand me? That's one of the emphasis that I want to lay after the, this man that gave the thing. When I give, I give to God. And you don't tell me how I want to spend my money anyway. You can go ahead and spend your own. And the, the people that are making propaganda here and their church is this. I will church be funded. They are telling you that the kingdom of God on earth should not be funded. And you are listening to them. Forget about tithes, forget about offering. You can't, go, you can't really go far. You can only take care of immediate needs of a, maybe a local parish like we are. A lot of people are kingdom financiers and God is blessing them. They are the back end, they don't even talk. They are not likely even to be minister or workers. But it's so sad that even among the people that call the, themselves the children of God, and that the Jews say, eh, we don't want to give the pastor so, so the pastor will not steal their money. How does your pastor become a thief in the first place? That's what daddy told us. And open heaven of this money, do not steal. Praise the Lord. I have learned that one. I never knew I would promise a pastor anything that is the kingdom of my father here on earth. The Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. So today, we are looking at um, verse 5. That's just it. That is not part of my teaching tonight. Please, I'm sorry. But the kingdom of God must be funded. Praise the Lord. That's an emphasis. So if a project is supposed to be done, don't bother yourself. If you are not going to bring, you are still fine. A man of God wanted to go somewhere. He called it. Then we used to attend leadership meeting and the likes. He cried though. He said, now call his partners. He said, well, they now say, ah, well, pastor, is God sending you to that new state? Ah. He said, he cried, and he went to God, Father, don't ever let me call these people again to sponsor your kingdom. He said, that was the last. And those people did not know. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. That's another testimony. Testimonial. That's another report card. Praise the Lord. About who? About faith. So, what can we say about Enoch? The floor is open. Contribution. Whatever I've said before that you want to clarify, you can ask. Or oh, this one. Praise the Lord. Enoch walk with God. Somebody was after, asking me this afternoon. The person did not know I'm going to talk about Enoch. Yes, I know it's you. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> my son was asking me, how did he work? How do I know? I, I like, Omo, oh, are you in my... So, how did Enoch work with God? Yes. This microphone, so people... Listening outside can hear you. Uh, praise the Lord. So, um, I've been, you know, studying about some of these biblical characters, and Enoch popped up in one of my research and. You know, I've not really understood, like, you know, his um, time with God. Obviously, I knew he was a man of faith. He was strong in Christ. And the Bible made it clear as well. 
But, um, you know, there's something I don't really understand. So, from that point when um, he walked with God, I kind of want to know what happened because that part isn't really clear to me. <laughs> answer. Let's answer him. That exactly was the question. How did he work with God? Praise the Lord. When we say Enoch walked with God, we mean that he was consistent in his faith, believing in God, that whatever God says he will do, he will do it. And that consistency, he never wavered till God took him away. Any other contribution? He worked with God, he was consistent in his faith with God. Any other contribution? This is Bible study. Yes. This is Bible study now. This is a work, W A L K. And it's, uh, it's different from W O R K. The Bible did not say Enoch did any special work. Work. It's just a work. And Amos 3 3 says, Can two work together except they agree? So, Pastor has said that it was consistent with God. You know, this is Old Testament. We didn't really know. We, and I told him this afternoon that we, we stop where Bible stop. We speak where Bible speak. And uh, one man of God, I think it was Daddy Joe, that said that how was um, Enoch taken away? And he was not. He just disappeared. So Daddy told us one of our minister's conference that maybe that day God used to visit Enoch. And uh, Enoch was just trying. You know it's not documented in the Bible. Daddy just told us that. He was just walking with God, escorting God, and he found himself and said, ah, God, I'm not going back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So it can happen to a believer that you, you are so engrossed, even in our worship, personally, you've, you've become transformed. And by the time you open your eyes, you say, ah, oh God, I'm still here. Praise the Lord. I don't know whether it has happened to anybody. You are very deep in worship. You are just like worshiping God's songs, praising God. In fact, you feel like you are lifted. You are no longer any, nothing on this earth, you know, move you anymore. By the time you are coming down from worship, you're like, as you want to be, praise the Lord. So we can have a closer walk with God. And because of his consistency in walking with God, Enoch obtained good reports. That what? That he pleased God. You remember the the, the, the first one, he gave offering. Is this offering? No. That I made him to obtain good reports. Praise the Lord. Quality offering, and he obtained good reports. This one, he was pleasing God. So if there are choices to make, he will just find out that ah, this one will displease God. He will not do it. That's working with God. Praise the Lord. You just wait. Some people, eh, God is just and by a B. They are their plan B. If this one did not work, well, God, I've tried to well, try. Well, you know, he was pleasing God all the days of his life. And he had the testimony that he was not. He's one of the people in the Bible that did not taste death. Which other person, character in the Bible, people that are studying character, that did not die. Bible quiz. Elijah. What happened to Elijah? He was taken away by chariots. Okay. That one did so well. God said, I'm going to send you a special exit. You will depart. I will send you a special, um, I won't call it helicopter. Well, transportation. You just come to my kingdom. Pam. What is glorious exit? Which other person did not die? Which other person? Bible study. Ah, you answer this one. How many people in the Bible died? And raised? Mm -mm. This is with Passion Week. Who died and was raised? How many? First of all, tell me how many. Then you now mention. At least if you don't know my Bible study, you know this one. This is general knowledge anyway. 
Bible jeopardy. We've not recovered from that jeopardy. <laughs> so how many people died and resurrected? Let's make it sharp, sharp now. Uh -uh. Lazarus now. Jesus Christ raised Lazarus. The, 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 the son of the widow of Nain, number two. Uh, that one, Eutychus, when Paul was preaching, he fell. He just slept on the... Don't sleep in church because if you fall. Uh -huh. Dockers was raised because of what? His contribution to the needy. That's fall. They, they drop in the tomb of uh, Elisha, number five. Uh-uh. Yeah, we are doing well. Any other person? We know it now. Praise the Lord. Just does a digression. It's not part of our study. So Enoch walked with God and he obtained a good testimonial. They testify of his character at the end of his journey on earth that he pleased God. Brethren, are we pleasing God in, in our decision making, in everything that we do? Is it to please men or to please God? You know, there are certain things that we want to do. <laughs> well, let's, let's do it. There is a way you would do it. That you still please your God. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Yeah. And also, if you look at the book of Hebrews, it, no, Jude, sorry. Jude 14 to 15. Say, en and Enoch, also the seven from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord come in with 10,000 of his saints. So that means Enoch also was a prophet. Mm. So, as a prophet, he he tried to bring people to, to God also, and God was pleased with him what, what, in every area, whatever he did. He walked with God for about 300 years, and nothing was found in him. Hmm. So that was why God took him. Praise the Lord. So in our pleasing men, are we men pleasers? Are we God pleasers? If you keep pleasing men in order to obtain their favor, you will miss out on the favor of God. Praise the Lord. It's not to live a, a life that is mean. You are not just me. You just explain on this matter. Praise the Lord. Daniel, Shadrach, uh, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They told the man, the man say, please, sir, we will not want to eat this food. Watch out for us. We would not want you to put you into trouble. Because by the time king sent for us, if you feel if you look so lean, king may punish you. Do you understand? Do they brag about it? So you can still please God and make your point to be known. You have to learn wisdom how to relate with people. It's not about insulting everybody here and here and do as if you, you are the first, you are the assistant Holy Spirit. No. Some people can just say, say ah. We are Hebrews, oh. And we can never partake in that door worshipping that you are doing. We can't eat your food. Their head will not rest on their body, daddy. Am I correct? So, there is a way. Bible says, be wise as serpent and be as gentle as dove. You have to explain clearly on this matter. The wife of uh, Wigus was. She's one of the people that learn correct conversation, even marital relationship. He said, my husband, in everything, you are my Lord. I obey you in everything, but you are not my savior. So when it comes to the thing of the kingdom, allow me to do it. But in that area, you are not going to stand for me on the day of judgment. Praise the Lord. So when we please God in our doing, God will even make our enemy to be at peace with us. And they, if they continue to remain the enemy, there is a day of vengeance. To so every misbehavior, there is expiry dates. And I keep saying there are certain boundaries people shouldn't cross. Now gentle with gentle. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, now gentle with gentle. Uh -huh. So let them know. But it doesn't mean that we have to begin to arise. Even in our gentleness, we are talking. And the Bible says, he that heart ears. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen? Any other question or contribution? We have five minutes to go. Have we learned anything tonight? 
Bracken, you have anything to say to us? The only media has talk. Sister Shola has no talk. Sister Aki has no talk. Sister Fumi has not talked. The two sister Fumi. Somebody is looking at me at the back. She has not talked. Talk so that we can see me. What's your contribution tonight? What do you, what's your take? And knock word with God and was not, for God took him. You for after after ladies first. Don't be shy. They are not turning camera on you. No. Yeah. Let's encourage her. She she's a good contributor. Yeah. Just one thing that stood out for me. Not to one. Okay. She's still booting. Central Processing Unit, CPU. Oh, yeah, Bracken, what do you have to tell us? Not tonight. Okay, praise the Lord. So we learn how many heroes of faith tonight by, by faith, Enoch, and we recap on uh, Mr. The one that gave offering. I just like that guy. Abel. Praise the Lord. Should we continue? We may not finish in five minutes, too. Okay. Verse 6. Yes, doctor, what do you say? You said something? You said something? Yeah. So, having a closer walk with God, not work with God, although we are supposed to work for God as we are on earth. Many of us want to do exploit for God, but it starts with a, having a closer walk with God. Let the journey start from there. Many of us, you know, pursue popularity and fame and the like without having. This treatise I write unto you, O Theophilus, of the thing which Jesus began to, to do and to teach. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, or Acts chapter 1, verse 2. Praise the Lord. Jesus himself, our Lord and Savior, did before he teach. Many of us want to teach before we do. It's a matter of time to show. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Abraham, at age of 75, God spoke to him. We are continuing with having a closer walk with God. Now, the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. That is Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. It's an act of faith. He didn't query God. Do you understand? But at that point, he has not obtained any testimonial. Meanwhile, at that point, many of us, we want to see location, map. Where am I going? Do you understand? We have to query, what will not happen to me? No job. No, how do I pay my bills? God, are you sure you are talking to me? Meanwhile, God has been talking to the person on another occasion. He recognized the voice of God that this is God speaking. But when it comes to certain decision in life, now begin to question. This man, father of faith, Abraham, a friend of God, did not question God. That is age of 75. Let's see what happened when Abraham was age 99. Age 99. Genesis 17, verse 1. Can you project it? Genesis 17, verse 1. In the context of having a closer walk with God. And when Abraham was 99 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham. I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. What has Abraham been doing? 25 years. And when you talk about Abraham, put yourself in Abraham's shoe. Have you even left what he asked you to leave? Have you even obeyed him to the point of uh, it doesn't look like it? Since it's the voice of God, I, I go for it. Praise the Lord. Have you prayed and God gave you three jobs? And God said, go and take the least expensive because I have assignment for you in that place of work. Have you gotten to that level and say, okay, God is speaking. I take the least expensive paid job. That is the process. That is the starting point. 
Many of us will not hear their voice. Say, hey, California, if they pay 100K a year, they are paying 300K a day. And you go there, you meet what you meet. I'm not saying God will always say, go for the least. Mm -mm. I am talking about having a closer work with God. God doesn't always say you should take the least expensive. Let me just clear that down. But in case God say, will you go for it? That son, I have daughter, I have an assignment for you there. This is what Abraham did. Abraham was, Ali was with his father. He was still living with Terah. <laughs> At that age anyway. So he left. And God promised him. Let's see uh, Genesis 12 verse 1 again. Genesis 12, 1 and 2. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. That's one aspect of faith. He believed. Uh -uh. This is Luke Juicy now. I'm going to be a great nation. He will bless me. Make my name great and I will be a blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. And in this shall all families of the earth be blessed. Ah. Okay. Some people say, okay, because of all the promises of God, Abraham will be, right? But after 25 years, did he get it? And at the age of, at the age that Abraham died, how many children did Abraham add? Leave the promises of God there. Just hold it there. Two that we know. I think he married Keturah and some other. Uh -huh. But the one that we know is Isaac and Ishmael. Does that make that one a, 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 a what does God promise himself? Verse 2 again. I, those two children are they nations. In his lifetime, were they nations. But today, are they not nation? The Lord will take us to that other side of faith in Jesus' mighty name. Because we always like to produce results. Now, now, now. You got it. Although faith is now. But as at the time that Abraham died, he wasn't the father of nation. Was he? He wasn't. But we have the testimony that he actually is a father of nation. God is faithful to his promise, my brethren. But what we needed to pass through, if he had uh, said, God, you just disappointed me. Because when we get to Genesis 17, verse 1, Genesis 17, verse 1, at the age of 99, after 25 years' pace, no even child. Whether, well, he had one. No one is a counterfeit in Jesus' name. I wanted to use that language, but it's not right. I wanted to say whether Jenny or counterfeit. That's not what I want to say. Praise the Lord. So he had only one child from the house. And God still come and say, Now, and when Abraham was nine, 99 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to him again. He wasn't hearing anything after the first encounter. And said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. If it is you, if it is me, in this generation that believe in result, what will we say? He said, God, you took me out of my country 25 years ago. What have become of me? Is that not what we will say? So we are learning the other side of faith. Praise the Lord. He is faithful that I have promised. And whatever we need to pass through in this world, we have to pass through it. We have pass through it to obtain that good report. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. Are you angry now? After all, God is still answering us here, Abby. We are on this side. So, I'm talking about working. God value that work, that relationship. And it's now until then that God now appeared before Abraham and entertained them. God mentioned that we should not forget to entertain strangers because some people entertain angels without them knowing. Abraham, the Bible was referring to him. And not until Genesis 18, when God now wants to try Abraham, he said, your son, and only begotten son, go and sacrifice him at Mount Moriah. If God did not specifically mention Isaac, I, I don't know, he would have said, ah, 
Ishmael self is not the will of God. He will have picked Ishmael, knowing that, ah, after all, Isaac is the child of covenant. Maybe you, God is saying I should just get rid of the... God said, no. He said, your son, your only begotten son. He did not say two. Does it mean that God did not recognize Ishmael? That's a, that's a question for, that we should ponder about. Time will not permit us to go to that Hebrew 18 because our time is off. But I have it here. So God said, your son, and only begotten son. And what did Abraham did? He had faith that even if he sacrificed, uh, he killed Isaac, God is able to raise him. Die and then he obtained good reports. Praise the Lord. As he put knife to slaughter the boy, both the father and the son. And I keep saying, Isaac too, we should give him credit because he was a teenager. The father, 99. If you wrestle that man, you, would just, you know, somebody would die for one person. I told you of a brother that used to come into my house that the father was a in CAC. He said the father used to behave erratically. At the time, he, they would go to farm. He would just be, you know, heaping heap. And he would stand on top. He said he's talking to God. He said one day, the father now carry cutlass. And he now told him, say, family, let's go to farm. He said, nobody, nothing. He said, if you want to behave like Abraham, I will show you that I'm not Isaac. It's a joke, honestly. The day he said in my house, I was like, how do you? He said, ah. My father may say, eh, because God spoke with, maybe God, God is not, me, I'm not Isaac. So we give it to Isaac too. Because he laid down his, himself. He asked the father, where is the sacrifice? He said, because he was used to the father giving sacrifice. And that's why the Bible talks about Abraham. He said, I know him. He will, he will teach his children. Are we teaching our children to follow the commandment of God? Now God is not asking us to kill our Isaac. He's not asking us to, to kill our children. The little is asking us. We will complain. Ah, the weather is bad, though. I see we are the only one doing winter in the whole wide world. Hey, we cannot. Ah, we pay bill. Yeah, oh, Pastor, if you don't have money, don't do project, too. We should repent, too. May God does have mercy upon us in Jesus' mighty name. So, doing that, you obtain a good report. And you still got the promises. Even after his death, Abraham blessings I have our womb. Any question? Yes. Talking about um, people working with God, like walking, W A L K I N G. And we talked about our faith is the substance of things not of things not seen, evidence of. So this is my question. Um, Judas is carried. He actually walked with Jesus. He had the evidence. He saw Jesus performing miracles, but still he did not get a good report compared to Abraham that you know he just had faith. So. Was it that Judas Iscariot was predestined, or like what? What did he? What mistake did he make in his walk with you know Jesus? Is my question clear enough? <laughs> and okay, so this is what I'm asking. So we're trying to. I'm trying to find a way to relate it to today, so that we can know the way to walk and actually have a good report, if that makes sense. Okay, so from my understanding, um, each and every one of us, before we are born, God already knows our destinies, right? So, if you look closely, um, Judas Iscariot was not the only disciple who betrayed Jesus. If you also take a look at um, Peter, okay, okay, he's the only disciple that betrayed. Yes. And by denying Jesus, he's basically, you know, revoking himself as one of Jesus' disciples, if you actually look at it. So, at that point, he's already basically saying that he's not a Christian. 
to the soldiers or whatever people were, you know, um, interrogating him as of that time. But um, fast forwarding to, you know, after Jesus had done his ascension and um, later on, you can notice how from that time span there was a change in um, Peter. The same Peter of that time that used to be shy and everything, when, um, you know, they had the um, yeah, the, when the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit came down, from that time on to the ending of Peter's life, you can definitely see that there was a change in him. So I believe that as at that point when Judas Iscariot already, you know, sold out Jesus, he could have definitely still repented. But, you know, I don't know, maybe he, was, he just felt a lot of guilt about the whole situation and that was what happened. For the contribution, yes, Sister Moranike. We are going to close latest quarter past, so make it sharp. As our brother has said, but remember that uh, before Jesus died, he brought Peter back. When he told Peter that Peter was going to deny him, but he prayed for him, mm -hmm. so that was why. That was why everything went. Praise. Then Judas, from 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 the start, is 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 somebody of shady character. Mm -hmm. He's a, he was a thief, mm -hmm. you know. It's just like uh, bringing somebody close to him. Maybe the person will repent. Normally, he steals. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's very easy for. Uh, the devil to use him because already he was just following Jesus, but he never repented. Mm -hmm. You know, he's of a very bad character. So, mm -hmm. when you just follow Jesus and you don't have, um, mm -hmm. you don't you don't work with him. Mm -hmm. He never worked with Jesus because he's, he was always stealing. Mm -hmm. So that was why devil used him. Good, good, good contribution. Thank you, thank you. You have nailed it. So, uh, the first speaker was talking about predestination. Don't let us go into that predestination. God did not predestine anybody to go to work. He did not predestine anybody to mess up. Are you, are you talking? I just wanted to contribute that God should, we should, we should, we should. anybody could have been Judas. It could have been Peter. It could have been me. It could have been anybody. We should only always ask God, to just help us. That's that same Judas Iscariot. It could have been anybody at all. If the if the prophecy said that one of the twelve, it could be any of the disciples. Yeah. And as he said, but okay. Okay, praise the Lord. I just wanted to add that the what made the case of Judas was was that I think um when he was called among the twelve, he could have as well say, oh, he wasn't ready. But he thought he's going to make some profit from being there. He was looking, what was motivating him was his own personal gain right from the beginning. And Jesus knew the type of person he was, and he keeps saying it. He keeps repeating it. You know, he said that a, a dog that wants to get lost does not hear the whistle of the owner. So he keeps saying it all the time, up to the extent that one of you will betray me. He was there. So he never repented. He didn't have any repentant heart. When Jesus told uh, Peter that, oh, before the court crew, you will deny me. He thought he could do it by his own power. He said, I, I will never deny you, even if he's to death. He thought it's by power. It's not by power. So, when Peter was able to, you know, to go back and he was able to repent, and he felt so sorry when he had the court crew, and he remembered what Jesus told him. He said, Before the court crew, you will deny me three times. He went by. He, he went back to his own memory. Say, ah, Jesus said it, and he came to, he came to pass. He felt so sorry. He was sad, but 
Judas was never sad. He was he never regretted over his uh, over his uh, offense until Jesus was uh, <laughs> had been captured. He was almost going to be put to death. Not so. I don't want this money again. It was too late. Praise the Lord. Let us also remember that Jesus prayed for Peter. There is no time that Jesus prayed for Judas. It can be anybody. And uh, as Sister Morenike said, he has been of bad character. So it's a lesson for us. One little sin that you did not deal with can lead to another, can lead to another. And eventually the person will betray Jesus. You open the door for the devil to use him. I pray God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. And um, we should not overestimate ourselves. The devil cannot use you. The Bible says the gate of hell will not prevail against the church. When Jesus Christ asked, who do you think people say I am? Everybody said I am. You, that you have been around me for these three years, who do you think I am? What would have expected the chorus answer? You are the Messiah now. We see the sign. Only Peter that say you are the son of the Most High God. That's not where I'm going. The same chapter, when Peter testified that you are the son of the Most High God, and Jesus Christ started narrating the kind of death he will die, Mr. Peter said, God forbid, you are not going to cross. What did Jesus say? Get the behind me, Satan. The earlier part of the scripture, filled with the Holy Spirit, the later part, brethren, let us examine ourselves in the time and days that we are and ensure that we have intimacy with God so that there will be no point in time that we allow Satan. You know, when I say it, you know, during our private meeting that, ah, Satan can use anybody. At times you may not even know that devil is using you. think you are helping God. Because Peter actually wanted to help Jesus. He loved Jesus. He said, why will you die? And if Jesus did not go to Calvary, how will, how will he fulfill his earthly assignments? It's not everything that is given to us that we know. But we should keep praying that God give me the grace to have a closer work with you. Not what I can benefit. As pastor said, even on Sunday, the disciples of Jesus, they were looking for Messiah that would deliver them from the emperor. That's their motivation. That is why immediately after, uh, after Sunday, on Friday, crucify, crucify him. The disciples too fled. All the Mary Magdalene, the household of Lazarus, the man with wither hand, uh, the man with the, the woman with issue of blood. She be all of them were in the city. Why didn't they raise their own voice? Say, don't crucify him. All of them left. But our master did not get offended. He knew what he's going to face. So it's a lesson for us. Don't be the gate. Because the gates will never prevail against the church. No matter what you do to the body of Christ, no matter what you do to Jesus here or not, or to any child of God, if it have a higher tar of bringing the gospel down, you are the gates. And you cannot prevail against the church. Brother Samuel, what's your question? I was just, um, it's all the controversial. I was just trying to contribute then. And um, what I was just, it just to, <laughs> you said it already, ma, more or less like, um, I think come as you are, but don't remain as you are. Correct. Most people, and it's a good lesson for us as Christians, it's not about the amount of time you've stayed. Okay, I've been in church mm -hmm. for 20 years, for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I used to the same person that came mm -hmm. to Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ embraces all, but mm -hmm. you as a person have to ensure that mm -hmm. you're not the same person. You have to keep, he said, um, we are with open faces, beholding him as a mirror, are being transformed from glory to glory. So meaning every time we have to ensure that we're not the same person we were yesterday. We have to keep what our work with God and our intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you don't remember anything tonight, remember there are two dimensions of faith. The dimension that God can do everything and is still doing by faith, you get it. But there's another dimension. If it looks as if life is happening to you, don't deny Jesus. You may be going through a process so that at the end of the day, you obtain the good reports. Let's bring out our offering as we bring the service to a close. Blessings are mine, 
I am blessed in the morning, I am blessed in the evening. Abraham, blessings are mine. Abraham, blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham, blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning, I am blessed in the evening. Abraham, blessings are mine. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this opportunity to hear from you once again. And I'm going to give back to you, Father, receive our offering in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you bless it in return and glorify yourself in our lives in the name of Jesus. Even as we go, let your prayer remain with us in Jesus' name. Father, guide us, protect us, and protect all our loved ones in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name, O Lord. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Before we say the great let us remember this Friday is what? VG, praise the Lord. So we'll have our VG, we'll have our Holy Communion. We'll start with the Holy Communion by what time? What time? 10. 10. If, if you don't come on time before you come, we'll have finished our Holy Communion. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. So we we'll have our VG and our anointing, and God will bless you. Come with your prayer points and Almighty God that answers prayers, we hear you and He will answer your prayers on that night vigil in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So let us share, share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. And also on Sunday, invite your friends. We're going to have a good time here worshiping and praising God more than ever before. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. <laughs>